hey everyone welcome back so in this video we will uh, talk about writing our own functions in R so many of you have probably used many of the inbuilt R functions such as the mean function so this function will take in X as the input the output will be mean of all of the elements in X the VAR function will take in x and the output will be all the variance of all of the elements in x the lm function will take in your data set and it will uh, implement linear regression or linear model on y and x so y is the response x is the predictor so it's possible that um, uh, at times you want to implement a certain method and there is no inbuilt r function that can do this um, so at such times you will have to write your own functions especially if you want to implement this method again and again repeatedly then it makes sense to write a function that can implement this method and anytime you want to use it you just call on to your function uh, so this is the syntax for writing a function in r so first you'll choose the name for your function so that's my function or my func is the name of the function that i'm writing here um so keep in mind to uh, name your functions informatively right so later on when you want to use them you can recall the name of the functions easily right so if you're writing a function to calculate the covariance of a data set then you want to name it at cov or covariance Basically, the name of the function should indicate uh, the operation that it performs, right? So you write the name of the function equal to uh, the word function. So this will indicate to R that you're writing a function. And then this A, so then you'll give a list of all of the inputs. So right now I have a single input A. Um, so then I, in the curly parenthesis, I have the body of the code, right? So this all, so the function will execute all of the lines that are inside uh, the brackets. So what does this function do? It takes an A, squares it, and returns this returns B. B is basically A squared, right? So I use the word return, or this is also an inbuilt R function. So the input of this will be A, and the output will be essentially A squared. So let's see how to use this function in R so I have typed out this function oops let's clear this it's always a good idea to clear your environment before you start working on anything uh, so let's do this my func do nothing it says could not find function my func um, so let me see how about mean to it can find the function mean but it cannot find my func function and this is because mean is an inbuilt r function so it knows what uh, uh, it knows what this function is it however it is not familiar with my func so you need to read it into r you need to run this function so let's do that i selected i ran it and now it appears in the working environment and now if i run it it works right now R knows what this function is so you need to tell R what this function is uh, so one way is you run it right and so this is my code I can uh, sorry not mean my func for right and so I have run this, I have this code here, I run this function and now I'm free to use it. So this is one way of using your uh, functions. Another way is this. So let me clear this. So this function is stored in this file called temp. I have named it as temp because I plan to delete it after uh, I'm done recording this video, okay? Um, so this function is in this file and now I'm writing uh, a new code where I want to use this function. So what I can do is I can use the source command. So source and I, I source this temp file and it appears in this working environment again. 
So let's take a look at that again. I source the temp file. It has the function. So if I source the file, all the functions in that file will appear here in the environment. And now I'm free to use this function. Oops. Oh, um, let's do this. Yep, it works, right? Another thing is remember to always um, keep uh, change or set your working directory appropriately, right? Um, so this is another function. This is a mean function. And this function is going to return the mean of all of your elements in the input A. Uh, I called it as my mean because mean function is already an inbuilt R function, right? So I call it as my mean. Uh, it will take an A. This part will calculate some of all of the elements in A and it will return some divided by the number of elements in A, which is basically the formula for mean. And now if I call onto this function and input uh, this uh, vector with elements one and two, the output is 1.5, which is the average of one and two. So this works correctly. All right, so uh, some things to keep in mind when you're writing functions, you want to build robust functions. Um, so for example, what happens if I have missing data? Missing data is a very common problem. You will encounter it all the time. So if I input this to my function, right? So instead of uh, one and two, and now I have this NA, NA means this first observation is missing. The output is going to be NA, right? Uh, so what can we do about this? So it's always a good idea to think of commonly occurring problems and try to account for them in your function. So in this case of missing data, I'm going to do this. I add this line called na.omit. What na.omit does is it will omit all of the missing values from A, right? So now if I call in, if I input this, the same uh, vector with missing values, the output is 1.5. So what my code has now done is it removes this NA and just gives me the average of all the available values, right? So this is one way of accounting for missing data. So when you're writing a function, try to make it as general as possible. What do I mean by this? So let's go back. Uh, yeah, so in this function, say I, might, I want to calculate mean of this vector A. A has two elements, one and two. So even in my, if in my function, I replace this length of A by this actual number two, if I hard code the number two, this will work. This code will work to, this, this function can calculate mean of any vector that has two elements, right? So this works. But if my vector has three elements, say one, two, three, this will not work. So um, point being, I don't want to hard code any values in my code. I want to avoid hard coding as much as possible, right? So your code should be as general and as flexible as possible. So the code should be easy to use. So it should be basically, the, uh, think of it as you're writing this uh, function for some other user. So the user should just input the data and get the desired output without having to do anything. So it should be as easy to use as possible. Um, try and account for, <coughs> excuse me, uh, as many mistakes as possible. Uh, so for example, uh, the format of the data. It is possible that uh, you have a function where input is required to be a matrix and um, it's possible that the user might input a data frame instead of a matrix. So in this case, um, you might, uh, the, the user might not be able to use um, this inbuilt function. So try and account for as many mistakes as possible um, in your, while writing your functions.
it should be as easy to use as possible so that's all for this video i will talk to you in the next video